Welcome to another episode of Eat, Smoke, Drink. Today I have a special whiskey to review. I say that every time because every whiskey is special. That's not true. Jim Beam and Jack Daniels isn't. Anyway, um, today I am going to review Lafroy 25. So, not the recent release Lafroy 25, but the 2008 release Lafroy 25. So that is 12 years ago it was released. This has been opened relatively freshly. Um, it is also cast strength, so that's going to be very different. A lot of the 425 you get is some pussy as non cast strength, and that's just to me a real travesty on something like this. So, this is cast strength at 50.9%, 2008 release, Oloroso Sherry Cask. Now, you all know about Lafroy. Lafroy is one of the most polarizing uh, whiskies out there, heavy peat super resiny super smoky um but let's see how this one pans out because my oldest review of lafroig in the past has been i believe the 18 year old and the 18 year old is the different beast to the 10 year old now this is 25 year old so you know this is one uh, one and a half times the age of your average 10 that you get out there on the shelves so let's get nosing let's get sniffing Nothing like any Lafroy you've ever smelt. A deep, deep, fresh, and old leather, wet leather, damp wood, tarry, salty ropes, a faint hint of rubber and rubber smoke. After a couple of sniffs, I'm getting that smoke come through. Quite a heavy smoke. But not like your normal Lafroy, it's very mellow. The smoke is prominent, but it's a mellow smoke, not as sharp, not as nasty. And I would probably say it's a very integrated smoke. The spirit, the sweetness of the sherry, and the smoke really melds together. And that brings me to the, to the sherry influences as well. A little bit of cinnamon in there, cloves, licorice, ginger, black pepper, menthol. That's what's interesting about it. Menthol. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. I'm getting a hint of vanilla in there, some heavy tannins, and some a little bit of that sickly coconut from the bourbon barrel. But the sherry influence is definitely quite, quite a lot. I'm getting honey, burnt honey, like a like a caramelized honey. I'm getting honeysuckle, a slight floral sweetness. Oh, absolutely stunning on the nose. I can just sniff this shit all day. And it doesn't have that um it doesn't have that quintessential trademark Lafroig fresh cow shit smell. Do you know how Lafroig has that fresh cow shit smell? It doesn't have that. They call it barnyard notes. I call it cow shit smell. That's not a bad thing. Mm, it's got a distinct floral to it, floral note to it. Honey, honeysuckle. But surrounded by a waft of peat all around you. Like you've got a bonfire, but the fire's quite hot, so it doesn't have a thick smoke, just as a hint of smoke. Oh, absolutely stunning. Oh, and you know what I'm getting? Peach iced tea. I'm getting a peach, peach iced tea. Let's get nosing. Oh, let's get tasting. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. There is the Lafroig. But not as you know it. Soft rubber. Soft smoke. Now I'm getting that smell of, um, cow shit but a dried old cow shit not so fresh not so wet and moist straight out of the cow's butt delicious brown sugar burnt brown sugar mmm 
very herbal very herbal and I mean it's got a hint of menthol licorice black pepper black pepper spice is actually quite prominent but it's coupled with a sweetness and a light floral nature to it as well which is quite a bizarre thing a hint of saltiness in there now that could be from the water that could be from the barrel influence from the coastal you know coastal area Mm. It's got some dry leaves, dried sun-baked leaves, you know when you're, it's autumn and you have the leaves just sitting on the tarmac or the, or the ground and it's just baking in the sun and it's super dry. I'm getting that dried leaf smell. The, the peat is soft, the smoke is soft, but it's prominent, right? So I don't know how to describe that. It's there, you can't miss it, but it's soft. Um, the sweetness is confronting and then followed by the saltiness so it's like a salted caramel almost the rubber start to finish the rubber is faint but it lingers then it's got a little bit of menthol on it it's absolutely delicious this this particular whiskey is how a Lafroy should be I'm not a big fan of the 10 year old the 18 is pretty good but the 18 year old uh, the 10 year old I'm not a big fan of the 25 is a different ball game altogether the 25 is a different animal it's like taking the 10 year old and really putting it in a suit you know and it's just making it all refined and it's just giving it that it's retained its guts but it's lost its mongrel. It's lost its rogue nature, um, and that's what that's what I love about this whiskey. Um, cigar pairings. Pff, look, I think this will withstand pretty much any cigar you put in it. It's not a, a face kicker, but it's definitely robust enough to withstand any cigars you put in it. Look, a 25 Lafroy. It's not something that you come across every day, um, especially a cast strength one. So if you can find it, get it, and I would pair it with something. Something a little sweeter, maybe uh, uh, a Maduro, uh, you know, LFD, something like that, or a Liga Provada, Provida um, range, something like a, um, a Undercrown Flying Pig, short and sweet, to have with your Lafroy 25. Um, would I recommend getting a Lafroy 25? It's unlikely you'll find this particular bottle anywhere, but yes i would i would recommend a lafroy 25 the cast strength i'm speaking of but even if it's not cast strength i think at 46 or 48 if you can find that i know in the us the lafroigs there are 48 um i would definitely go for it because it is delicious it is absolutely stunning and quite a unique experience at, at, at that so until next time make sure you eat smoke drink don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. Cheers.